Hey, friends and fans of What the Fact, this is Patricia. Next week's episode that typically comes out on Monday, which is the 13th, will come out actually next Tuesday, the 14th, due to our recording schedule for the week. So I apologize in advance. And to make that up, I hope you enjoy this week's episode. Here we go. Happy New Year. Uh, welcome to episode 22 of What the Fact. This is Patricia. Ashley. Stephanie. We're all one person. And uh, basically, Happy New Year to you guys. Happy New Year. Hope you've survived so, the six days now into the new year. My, my voice says I've, I've survived at this point. Can I call something out that we were just talking about? So we said to the listeners we'd do a rap. And I will write one in the new year. Okay. And we will perform it in a proper manner. That's fine by me. I'll rap it. And you'll wrap it. I'll do, I don't even mind writing the lyrics. That's fine. And That's holding fine. down the beat. If you can <laughs> continue with this moonshine, I'll rap too. <laughs> you are rapping. I mean, have I been rapping this whole time? Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I, I feel like I have the, the voice and the cadence to hold a rap. So yeah, I sure do. Yeah. Don't I? Don't I? Yeah. This is our last episode of our batch recording. So by the time that you hear us next week, Ashley will be back from her honeymoon. We'll be back to normal. I, I will have never left. <laughs> I won't have <laughs> either. <laughs> We're hanging out in San Francisco over the holidays. Uh, but it's also about to start rainy season. Today's supposed to be like a rainy day. So we're kind of getting excited. At least I am. I love rain. Me I too. Love, yeah. I the, love storms more than anything. The Especially petrichor. lightning and thunder. And, oh, I love thunder. it so much. Is it the smell of the smell especially of, imagine dragons <laughs> <laughs> i like the smell of rain is that petrichor is a word for that right the smell of rain is that what it I is that that. yeah and then there's i love i love um just th- when i was a kid for dinners we'd go out to eat a couple times a week and if it was a rainy day we always went to arby's and as a kid i loved arby's which is weird to say so However, you just associate it with rain and i associate it with like Yes, it's a good day. So whenever yeah. there's rain, I was like, this is going to be a great day. So now I'm just into rain. I've nice always thing. been a little bit of like a, oh, what's the word of the people who always like prepared for the worst? Doomsday? Doomsday Doom people. Yeah. A little bit of a doomsday people, but not not to the extent where I think the world's going to end. But yeah. just like, well, if I know it's going to be storm, I'm like, I have to get all my food and drinks. <laughs> and so I don't have to leave the house for a couple of days. It's That's like someone a- from Southern California. I know. <laughs> If it like somewhat sprinkles, like everybody just veers off the road. <laughs> so now whenever there's like mild rain, it's it's the worst thing that can happen. Um, I used but, to love yeah, when they would be like, it. there's going to be a snowstorm tonight. So the kids would get so excited. As a kid, I would stay up late because I knew there's a good chance to get we get ca- school canceled. Yeah. But we never really got school canceled. Oh. <laughs> of my time from seventh grade through high school, I think we had one snow day. Because our wow. superintendent lived across the street from the school. He's oh. like, if I can get to school, you guys can oh, too. Oh, what a jerk. You can do it. I do like this idea of like people's different tolerance to weather conditions dependent on where you're from. Yeah. So like we're talking about LA, right? I LA did grow area. Up in LA, but I, I love good weather. Like not not good as in like sunny and in the mid seventies, everything's fantastic. No, I love hard rain. I love hail. I love thunder and lightning. And when I see snow, which is very rare, it's like the best day of my life. Oh, I hate snow. I love it. <laughs> I don't but mind only it. when I don't have to leave. That's that's yeah. the difference. Is I love being so prepared in my house for whatever is happening outside of it. Yep. That I'm just so thrilled. Remember how we talked about our favorite holiday songs? One of mine is like song from Winter's Night is like the kind of song you play mm-hmm. while there's snow and crap going on outside. You're yep. just like, Yes, I'm in inside of my little hearth. Yeah, mine's just Mariah Carey. One of my, <laughs> one of my uh, good girlfriends from LA, my friend Ro. Um, the first time when I met her in LA, she, it was actually we met through work. She was my agency counterpart, and then I went down to LA, and she's like, "Oh my gosh, it's so cold! Bring a jacket." So I'm coming from Seattle to LA. <laughs> I'm in my flannel. I have my puffy jacket. I, if I was a man, I would have had an ironic mustache. <laughs> Too bad I'm a woman and I wax that shit off. And uh, <laughs> and I get down there and it's freaking 70 degrees. I'm sweating. 
sweating through my flannel. I'm sweating <laughs> through my jacket. And I'm like, freaking LA people. And they're like Fuck preconditioned, you, like sensitivity to mm-hmm. weather. Yes. But I do have to say though, San Francisco, we have like a temperature year round of like 67 degrees. It's perfect. It's amazing. Yeah. It's perfect. It's like blue skies but every day. If it ever becomes like 70 plus degrees, we're like it stripping sucks. down. Well, because we don't have air conditioning. Yeah. But the thing is like, it's True. like 72 degrees outside. We're wearing like tank tops and we're like sweating our bodies. We got to deal with the lack of air conditioning. But then if it gets like below 61 degrees, it's we're just awesome. like, we are it's wearing Uggs. winter coats, Uggs, <laughs> <laughs> gloves, head, like we close head. our windows. We yeah. bundle up. To be clear though, the Marina, which for those of you not from San Francisco is a very specific neighborhood. I don't know if one of you would like to take the descriptions of what the Marina is. Let me just is. say, I live across the street from the, where the Marina starts. You don't starts. live in the Marina. You don't live in the Marina. But I live across the street from where it starts. And a lot of my friends make fun of me. They're like, you live in the Marina. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Yeah, it's, I do a not. Little, it's a little fratty. It's mildly Come on. But I enjoy it. I enjoy it down there. I can lord up a fucking storm in the marina. I do well in the marina. It's so homogenous. It sure is, but I do well there. (laughs) I can't. I can't even. I mean, I maybe go to the marina once every blood moon <laughs> i go there frequently because there are a lot of stores that i get, I shop that are it's in marina a so. beautiful area yeah. do not get me wrong are there homeless people no because they collect them and kill them in a shed in the marina to keep murder it in ashley's murder shed in the murder shack <laughs> the marina is like pleasantville and accurately there are no Ooh, ethnic people who live there that's an interesting description i think i, I kind of i kind of love it but think the, pleasantville but like City Pleasantville. The other description that the Marina gets is they are the children of the old money from Pacific Heights and they move from the Pacific Heights. Huh? You mean Lake Street? There's so no, much money not on Lake Street. No, not Lake Street. That's a different hood. That's like closer to Seacliff, like Pacific Heights. But that, there's so much money there. There is a lot of money, but I think Pacific Heights money is like my grandfather built the railroad money. Interesting. <laughs> my or Danielle invented. Steele. Yeah. Yes, oh. her house is a block. And she used to right live near up. me. I used Danielle to, or I should Steele say, she'll live near her. Has people, she hired people yeah, to rotate her cars on the street so she can park on the street. Did you know that? Oh. She hired people, someone who just like rotates her cars. That's it. I mean, we've talked about But to... she, she, it's like, it's a whole gated area. What, it what is. do you need to, but she still has to park on the street because she has so many cars. So she's like, Get, from what I heard, maybe though, have less someone car. who does it. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like an easy solve. A right. long time ago when I was a kid, there was a house in Pacific Heights where I believe the butler was murdered. And it was what? like, <gasps> shut up, let's what? investigate this. Murder mystery <laughs> of that this. <laughs> Also, I feel like we should all do a murder mystery dinner thing. Ooh, should we do a dine in the dark experience? That's like different. Yeah, stop that's squeezing different. No, my so thigh. My, <laughs> that's for not my, like, <laughs> Those are my toes. <laughs> oh, my 29th or 30th birthday, I did a whole murder mystery dinner thing. It was yeah. like Ooh. a bigger, it was, so much fun. It seems super corny, super ridiculous, but when you have people like us, it's awesome. And I really think we should do it. So mm-hmm. I think one of the things like we should have a um, resolution for the podcast for 2020 is that we do more experiential things together. And I want to do them. murder mystery dinner. Okay. But like the, the and, actual setup, we don't shops. have to do things. We just show <laughs> up and they, they just tell us if we died or not. So or- some of the things we've <laughs> talked about too are like, we could go out to a bar and Ashley could be our wingman. Done. We could also do like a yes. uh, speed dating. Done. Um, Write it down. We got to do this for the I can be like, I'm speed dating, but I'm married. <laughs> speed date, murder mystery. Uh, what was the other one? Sex, sex shop. shop. Sex shop. Yeah, let's do them all. But not a prostitution shop. No, we're not looking for prostitutes. We're just going to uh, oh, expand some horizons. Another one was a hip hop dancing class. Yes. I would do that like a tonight. ghost tour. I would do a ghost, a ghost tour. tour? Ooh, I think yes. we should have like 12 things to do one thing a month. Together. I love also, it. Love it. Give you, us ideas if yeah. we haven't yep, said that. If ideas. you have any ideas, email us at hello at WTFAQpodcast.com and we will probably do your idea. We will yeah. likely if do we your idea. If we haven't already named it. If it is, however, to visit you and look at your bedside drawer, though, I'm going to decline. <laughs> you can just send Darn us it. a picture of your bedside drawer and we'll tell you whether or not it's shameful. <laughs> Shame. I can tell you right now. Shame. Likely no. <laughs> so he's going to be like, where did you get that? And how do I get one? Unless there's like a I knife and a gun in there. I'd be like, mm, no. <laughs> but not a mace. 
No mace. <laughs> um, actually, you know, I, I, I sort of want to do a surprise change visit up. Visit Nebraska. Should be one of visit them. Nebraska. Yeah. Oh, visit Nebraska. Um, because we were talking about the weather, I sort of want to get into my question first. Let's Is do that it. Okay? Let's fucking do yeah. it. Yeah, let's do um, it. Okay. Question the first. So question one. First question. Um, okay. So my question That's has to Ashley do with. speaking. <laughs> this is Ashley again. You tell me the volume of my voice because I'm throwing it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Can't wait to edit that. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Make it hard. <laughs> hard voices. That's, that's what I say in my dates. I oh. know. From her tiny mouth hole. Wow. All right, go on. <laughs> go on. Go on. <laughs> okay. So my question is from a listener. Yes. Should we? Can you make a sound to. Um, introduce a listener question thunder in the thunder is, is that the, the, <laughs> what's his name Magic insert Dragon? insert listener question oh, thought... music here before that we're trying to add a listener question into every episode so feel free to send yours in like ashley mentioned please yep. send them in the dirtier the better so this <laughs> except list... for patricia but i love them this <laughs> so is stephanie this listener <laughs> This is Ashley asking question one, and it only took us 20 minutes to get here. Yeah, um, so my question is, and it's from a listener from Canada. His name is Didier. Ooh, Didier. Didier. I believe he is Quebecois, oh, if you will. Merci pour la question. Are you single? <laughs> That's all I care And if about. not, are you a, an open to a thruple? A thruple or do you have single hot friends? <laughs> but the Please question, help me. He emailed us. Actually, he emailed us a while ago and called yeah. out Stephanie. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Shit. However, his question oh, was. Is this the Blu-ray debacle? Um, yes, it, yes. That was. Oh, yes. son of a. You were correct. <laughs> I'm understanding. I was wrong. I admit it. So, what's so the question, his actually? question was, would you rather live in a cold place any and he put minus four degrees Fahrenheit, but I'm going to say minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit oh. year round or a hot place over 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's say over 100 degrees. Uh, over 100 degrees. Yeah. So the question again is, would you rather live in a cold place minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit all year long or a hot place over 100 degrees all year long? And so for those of you who live in the Celsius world, Zero or zero degrees Celsius is equivalent to thirty-two 30, degrees Fahrenheit. Thirty-two, yeah, yep. yeah, and a hundred degrees Fahrenheit is equal to what, like twenty-four? I don't do I'll that. I'll check it up real quick. <laughs> we don't do conversions for America. Metric system Celsius. What is that about? Okay, I I have a I have a response, but I feel like I can, 30, I can be 38 degrees, thirty-eight degrees Celsius. Um, I have. This is Stephanie. I am, um, I have very, 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 very sensitive skin to both cold and hot. Oh, so you're fucked both ways. <laughs> no matter where I go, I am truly fucked. But being that I prefer inside over outside, I'm going to go cold over hot. Okay. Why? Because I feel like most homes have heating. And the worst is that I have to take my dog out really quickly we can get him the gloves or whatever he goes to the bathroom we bring him back in i do get some cold rashes but it's not that bad you he... can get cold rashes oh, every time oh, i walk yeah. to work i get a cold rash what is that oh, just yeah. like regular eczema or is it literally from the cold you get a rash like cold. i get like wind rash on my yeah. cheeks when I'm oh i've gotten cold. a little bit of wind but that's pretty it's pretty extreme if i'm yeah. getting that like i'm going i'm skiing yeah i get both it's basically like you skiing versus me just walking to work in 50 degree <laughs> weather is what i or get all over feet. my body but the heat rash is way worse the heat rash is so much worse than the cold rash oh wow the heat rash is it's any skin that's been exposed is any skin that hasn't been exposed, but I sleep super poorly. Yikes. It's horrible. So oh knowing gosh. how my body reacts, I'm going cold over hot because one, I'd rather be inside. <laughs> I, I just prefer being inside and maybe getting a, a hot tub because that, that seems better in the cold weather than the hot weather. And then when I, when it's hot, I get super rashed up. It sucks. That's true. Okay. It's super sucks. Okay. Fair, so I'm going fair. cold. Cold. Uh, for me, I think I'd rather live in a place that's really hot. Uh, not to be anti what you answered, Stephanie. However, no, that's just my skin. <laughs> um, I think there's a chance when it's cold, and if it's that cold, you're gonna get snow. And I detest snow. I detest ice. I hate 
getting around in the cold. I hate it. I also take out my dog when it was snowy outside. I had to put on like five layers of clothing every time she had to go out. She had to go out like every few hours. So I had a pile of clothing basically by the door and I hated trying to get all the stuff on, Mm -hmm. putting her booties on. If it were that hot, I'd still put booties on my dog if we're going to the concrete. Correct. So she'd still wear that, but she wouldn't have to wear like all the sweaters and everything that I had to put on her too. It's a sport getting out into the cold. It is. Especially like, with a dog. There's so much you have to do to their paws so they don't yeah. get but, harmed but, in any way. But even for people, you're sweating before you even get outside. Yeah. <laughs> I Plus, don't like, like that. Driving in the cold was a pain oh, in yeah, the ass because you had shit. to start your car for like 20 minutes before you could even drive it. You had to like clean off the windshield every day. Um you would get inside your car and like give off body heat and make the windows like fog over. It's mm-hmm. just, it's a pain to deal with your car in any kind of situation in the cold. And some of you who are listening to this are dealing with us right now. So come visit us in San Francisco. <laughs> It'll be much better. It's pretty much perfect weather all the time. Yeah. It is so beautiful. It's so amazing. I mean, I, I do wish I had air conditioning sometimes for same, the couple yeah. of weeks where it like decides to be 90 degrees. Other than that, it's just perfect. It just been, started raining outside. Is it just starting us? to rain? Oh my god! This is the first rain of like the year. This and will put late. out all the fires. So San Francisco doesn't. We never really <laughs> get this. rain here. All the fires. We get rain here for like maybe a month, and it's like January. No, it's, so it's we used starting. to get a lot more rain. Yeah. We used to get a lot really? more fog. With yeah, climate warming, change. Climate change. <laughs> for those of you who <laughs> believe in that, hopefully all that. of you. Either way, it is. The end of November, we're getting our first rain of like the it's year. Late. Yeah. <laughs> it's very late, actually. Yeah, no. Um, I, yeah. I Anyways, it. final I answer. I definitely, I, love it so I much. also like the idea, like, if I were to live in a hot place, I'm sure I'd have a AC. Um, I also like the feel of a fan on my body. Mind you, my naked to, body. I used to live in Hawaii. <laughs> I like the fan of me on my sleep, so I like that. Um, your mouth doesn't get dry? Do you not sleep with your mouth open? I. <laughs> your tiny mouth hole open tiny mouth hole <laughs> mouth hole can be open or closed doesn't matter <laughs> so i, I breathe through my nose when i sleep um oh okay but i my i do i do have to like get up and drink water sometimes uh because i do breathe at night you know it's crazy breathe. you stop <laughs> actually i stop breathing when i sleep at night <laughs> you hibernate with no breath uh but i really like the idea of being able to you can go outside and get in a pool in the summer too you can do some of this other stuff granted i i, I would hate it i'd hate living in the heat but if I had to choose between the two, I'd choose the heat. Around. Indoor pool. Oh, God, I would love it. Stephanie an indoor never pool. sees anyone once she lives in cold. In the my cold skin places. would be so thrilled of like no sun, no heat, no but cold. My skin gets so, cold, no so people? dry. No people? <laughs> the winter is horrible for my skin. Oh, I, yeah. I would like to note that I, I, I have to lotion every single day because I do have eczema and all the fun facts. Um, right now, I'm like, eczema licious right Your now you are really good. yeah you look fine oh, yeah, thank you, you. thank you so much any change in the weather fucks that up really yeah. anything mm. literally anything mm. so cold i feel like i am less destroyed than heat well for me and like where i lived in the midwest there was is the cold just meant you had dry skin dry lips mm. dry mm. everything you had to like lotion up like three or four times a day just like maintain sanity also, you understand the heat rash that i've experienced i had to go to the doctor what i had to go to the doctor for such extreme heat rash that layers of my skin started to scale what the heck are oh, you yeah. part iguana i am part iguana oh, well you are again named- while i couldn't be named elizabeth yep. because of the oh, lizard lizards. skin that's yep. true uh yeah that. no it, it it came to fruition when i lived in hawaii um i had air conditioning in my apartment but it wasn't good enough uh, and just heat heat rash is something yeah. else and the there, there's thing... there's cold annoyance there's a little bit of a burn you can deal with it but heat rash is something that requires topical like prednisone ointment oh yeah. gosh it and gets it, to the pregnant prednisone horrible oh my gosh it, I, I wasn't allowed to wear a bra which some might find appealing but it's not appealing <laughs> it's called me every day it's if only if only it was Today I'm wearing one. So okay. horrible. So I like I like how you did that and like everything moved. Mine doesn't move. Yours um, doesn't move. Yours just moved a did bunch. Mine just move? Yeah. Ooh. Everyone's moves. These aren't cement blocks. My I mean, they're not cement yours, blocks. But yours, de- your moves. This is like no, we're, we're like basically no lifting bounce. up our bras in front of each other. <laughs> I like the gradient to see, scale to over see here, the though. bounce. There's a little bit of a gradient bounce. scale. We we go. We got the the perky small, the perky <laughs> medium, the droopy big. <laughs> That's not true. I had I had a breast reduction surgery, so they're pretty perky again. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> Any, anyway, about this. Uh, uh, so one, the other one last thing I do want to say about living in the cold that I do hate over living in the heat is that in the cold, you have to wear like cover your head. And my hair is the kind of hair that if you touch it, it will like staticky or it'll be horrible mm, the rest of the day. So fair. like covering your head with a winter cap or a winter hat would just mess it up for the day. So I just have to wear it the whole day. Fair, I hate that. Fair. I, Ashley, what okay, do you Okay, my answer is I'm going to have to agree with you, Patricia. Well, first of all, I love hot weather. So, but I did not mention humidity for a reason because humidity changes the game. For sure. So I'm excluding humidity from this discussion. Okay. But we can get into it. Okay. Um, I'd say hot weather because I like going, I feel like if I could live in an air conditioned place, hot weather, absolutely. Yeah. I also feel like when it's cold, I'm less inclined to go outside and therefore I will never see people again. That's my dream. That's your goal. That's <laughs> that my, my like, dream. my anti-life. This is Stephanie. I would like to never leave my house again. <laughs> <laughs> Just um, come to me. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I like, you know, I like going to the beach. I like swimming. It, when it's cold, I do not want to work out because I don't want to go outside. Indoor pool. I mean, but now you're saying like it's cold and I'm filthy rich. Indoor pool. <laughs> And it's called we're all rich. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody come to my indoor pool versus I can zero degree versus, temperature. I can be poor and it can be hot. <laughs> I also like to dress like it's summer year round, even when it's like not summer. So sure. I like that. My feet like sandals because they like to breathe. Oh, I hate sandals. What? Can I tell you something that I hope it does not make you think less of me? Say it. Get out of this house. <laughs> flip flops are like the biggest turn off for me from anybody. So you're really turned on to me right now. It's so turned off by you. <laughs> Girl, this is an I Asian wear Morgan socks every time I come to your house. She's hated it all the time. Every time she's like, Please. sandals aren't so bad. I think it's it's flip flops. I can't so handle what I'm flip-flops. wearing right now. <laughs> my my indoor slippers are freaking her the fuck out. They're fine because we're indoors and slippers, but like out in public, I just can't handle people who wear flip flops. Girl, how do you go to Hawaii? I've never been to Hawaii because of this. Should have visited me. <laughs> Fucking love Hawaii. My, I just, my second home. I just Third like. Home, home? I if, if, and I also don't really care watching see people wear shorts. I don't know what it is. I just I hate. I guess I hate seeing exposed <laughs> bottom legs. Shorts too. She's literally defining Short everything that flops. Stephanie always wears. I know. I've Shorts. never seen you wear zero <laughs> climate. Still. <laughs> I've never seen you wear shorts. You definitely have worn shorts. But I recall. Let me Did just say, though. I just have one thing tiny that, daddy skirts. One thing that I love about San Francisco is people don't wear pants year-round. True. And I love that. But then the shorts people, Wait. people who wear shorts tend to be like tourists. I'm like, oh, you're a tourist. You're wearing flip-flops. You played soccer forever. So yeah, it, but when you, play soccer, when you play soccer, you don't just wear shorts. What? You cover up the bottom part of your legs, too. I don't know what it is. I just really hate, like, I've worn flip-flops for a lot of my life. My my slippers that I wear at home are flip-flops. Okay. All right, I know. I, I have a clarifying question. <laughs> Do you hate the weather because you hate people in shorts and flip-flops or because you hate the cold? What? <laughs> Stephanie's getting really upset. I'm not really Do sure why. Do you hate... People in shorts and flip flops, or do you just hate the cold? I just don't like the look of flip flops. I think it makes you look like a. Cheap okay, person. okay, that's a very interesting <laughs> answer. I know it's a judgment answer, and I apologize for people who love flip flops. No, and if you want to, I mean me that is that's me. Literally and I'm okay me. with this. I just wanted to clarify that that is I wear flip flops at hate. home most of the time, but I really hate the look of flip flops. I think it makes it looks really cheap disgusting mainly because i wear it often like currently i i'm currently <laughs> wearing them i just see a lot of people like i remember Trust seeing that tone a lot of people wearing flip-flops like and their feet look disgusting in them and it's grossed me out I don't, also i don't get pedicure as much i just i like i like covered feet i don't know what it is i can't help myself but so every also, time i wear birkenstocks you're like oh god not again no it's fine i just think <laughs> but i think a man wearing, i like i do like men's feet open you wait what? what i love it i think <laughs> men's feet can be sexy wait 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 wait, wait. so you just don't like Holy women's shit. feet that might be it too you don't like women's feet in flip flops because you think i don't like an cheap? exposed i need toe. more moonshine for this conversation <laughs> i think you gotta what shoot that back wait what wait, wait. the fuck let's, let's unpack this so i don't want to unpack this wait you're guys. unpacking this <laughs> wait so you like men's feet are I you a foot like person it. Are you, is that your fetish? No, but I, I, some, <laughs> I've seen a couple men's feet who I'm like, oh, you are hot and I like your foot, but it's, I don't look for men's feet. <laughs> well, okay. So if it's like you go for the hot climate there, there's hot guys on the beach playing volleyball. Sure. I get it. Yeah. But then if it's like 
a little bit colder and they're just in flip flops. So and that this. that that's your line. If I saw a man walking in San Francisco today where it's like mid sixties outside, yeah, a little bit of rain, and right now flip flops, I'd be like, you know, that's too fucking cold. I mean, even I okay. To be fair, <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> uh, sorry, Letter Kenny. It's this whole thing of like to be fair, it's making fun of it. Um, I wear flip flop Crocs. <laughs> To okay. take my dog out. So anyway, they are so <laughs> comfortable. To, to take my dog out because they are water and rain was resistant. If we were to ever just get a the sponsorship, bottom are. <laughs> if we were to ever get a sponsorship, Crocs. I'm just saying they're comfortable, man. I wear so many Crocs. I love Crocs. <laughs> but so I take Briggs out when when it's you know whatever temperature because the Crocs are are super comfortable. I'm not going to slip. Yeah. True is what it is. True, that's fine. But that's only to take him out, and then yeah, I bring him back in, and like then well, walking the sidewalks and going somewhere out in public wearing flip flops. No, but I did. I will I say that. very quickly that uh, <laughs> a little a little while ago, I have fr- a couple of friends took me out for dinner. Yeah, and one of my friends was like noting our distinct different looks. Two were dressed very well. One was dressed very casual, and I was in Birkenstocks. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was noted and commented frequently. And I take it with pride. So I have to say though, <laughs> I've been trying to work on this because I feel like it's a thing that I judge people on, and I shouldn't. So my Pokemon Go character, I recently took all of her shoes off. Wait, I don't understand the sentence you just said. Am I? Are we supposed to not be responsive on the? Lack of shoes of the Pokemon or the Pokemon? So the That's Pokemon exactly. Go character is like a person, right? Oh, and you watch that avatar kind of walk the streets. And I was like, you know what? I'm so judgmental about people not wearing shoes that cover their feet when they walk in the city, especially because it grosses me out. But so I was like, to overcome this, I'm going to take off all the shoes. Can you can change your outfits. I took, she's going shoeless right now throughout the city. Okay. So here's my thing. Yeah. I, I wear flip flops a lot in my home as slippers. That's fine. And when I'm on vacation, if I'm in some beachy area, I will wear flip flops. Would I wear flip flops on the Muni here? Hell no. That's absolutely not. Disgusting. I'm just afraid. Like, I can't understand why people wear any kind of exposed foot shoe in the city. Well, that's because the city is disgusting. Yeah, that's but where like, it's but, I used to wear flip flops all the time. But like, in yeah, in in a different neighborhood, even in my hood, I might go to the grocery store and pick something up. That's cool. But yeah. it's. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's also not downtown. Like downtown is is just I'm just hot garbage. I'm just grossed out by the city. Um, in terms of like, my shoes get dirty, my pants get dirty when I walk. Like I don't want. I think anybody who wears flip flops or like skin exposed shoes here, this might be me unpacking it fully. It's here in the city. <laughs> I can't handle people wearing flip flops because it just grosses me the heck out. Fair, fair. I'm trying to think. I always wear sneakers to your place. You do wear sneakers in my place. I love sneakers. sneakers. Every time. Exposed feet on the bus to your house. <laughs> yeah. Oh, anyway, sorry. <laughs> Birkenstocks, bitches. Anyway, Those shoes so, are very expensive. This was a good question, Didier. I feel like we learned a lot of really new things that I did not realize. Mostly that Patricia's just disgusted by us. By my feet. <laughs> Mostly by Stephanie, actually. By my feet. No, I wear uh, flip flops at home. Um, the Birkenstocks cover somewhat. They do. You need some of. toe condoms. <laughs> No, no. Hmm. Business idea? No. I so I might be in on this business idea. <laughs> let's do <talk>, No. Sick. <laughs> oh, you're oh so God. offended. You're so offended. I keep thinking of my seventh grade PE teacher. What? I don't know why. <laughs> what? Let's just move on. And okay, let's go into question two because what? I feel like this is a deeper d- That's a whole other duress story. than we'll I've normally seen. We'll have a whole other conversation on that business. All yeah. right. What, what, who's, question who's two. Question so two? this is uh, Patricia. No, I'm third. I'm last. It's Stephanie. You're last. It's mine. So we totally changed it up. Okay. Right. It's mine. Question okay, two. Okay, so mine is super obvious, but somehow inflicts a lot of uh, conversations. And it's a very typical question, but it is. What is your favorite movie? You want to go first? No. Okay. I mean, I'll go. I'll fucking go first. I don't care. Um, no, I'll go. Uh, so this one's... So that's a very broad question. It's so broad, which is why it's such a good question. Yeah, there is... If you go anywhere. I will say... So I one, like four. I, oh, I was going to name one, but I, some might come to I me have so in a many. Bit. Okay, so the one that immediately comes to me is when I was in eighth grade, Um, you... In San Francisco, you apply to high schools, and the high school um, application process is sort of intense. You take tests, you do interviews. It's the whole shebang. Yes. 
Um, and so I actually really wanted, I had a number one high school that I wanted to go to, but I got waitlisted for a variety of reasons. Um, my brothers went to a different high school. There was, anyways, there's a lot of politics in San Francisco high schools. So it's all a lottery system, by the way. <laughs> it's not. It's whose family has more money. But it's, that's a different. It's discussion. money plus lottery, mostly money. It's mostly money and who ninety percent money, ten percent lottery. Which, not my family. So, uh, <laughs> the day that I found out that I didn't get it into the high school that I want to, I was really, really destroyed. Um, mostly because I was just like, I worked so hard, and the reason that why I found out that I didn't get it. My high school counselor, because it is such a political system in San Francisco, he told me, he was like, they assumed you're going to go to your brother's high school, so they decide to waitlist you. And that's like purely the only reason, like that's what he told me, which really, it wasn't my qualification. It was the politics of probable, probabilistic decisioning, which is bullshit because every child is different, right? I mean, but that's politics. I mean, that's, yeah, you're right. That's literally the <laughs> definition of politics. So I- if there's um, people, there's politics. Um, my mom actually that day- she was like, let's take a day off of school. Aww. Um, and That's nice of you, Reba. Yeah, Reba. It's Reba. very surprising. Um, and I remember we actually, it was a blood moon month in the <laughs> marina. <Some> blood moon. <laughs> and she took me out to get food and we went to see a movie uh, midday and we saw the Green Mile. Aww. And it's oh, a great. Also, oh, God. It's a great movie. <laughs> oh, I shit. actually I forgot up. what that was about for a moment. Yeah, it's a, it's a great movie. I teared up a bit, probably because I was emotional. But I don't know if that's my favorite movie because it is also a great movie. But good. the story behind it with my mom sort of like makes me sort of remember a really sad but also good time with my mom. So I'd say that's one of my favorite movies just because it reminds me of that experience. Perfect. Yeah. That's nice. Perfect. I have several, several. <laughs> so my actual favorite movie of all time, and it seems a little like obvious, but uh, it's actually The Graduate. Really? I, I love The Graduate. I've Is always that Mrs. Loved the Robinson? With, yes, with Dustin, Dustin Hoffman, Hoffman, right? Dustin Hoffman. I just watched Incredible. that recently. One of, one of the best movies ever. But if I'm going to go for like what I grew up with, the, the nostalgia factor, or whatever it is, I have so many others. Pretty much anything Leslie Nielsen. Oh, man. Naked so gun. Naked Gun, one, two and a half, three and a third, <laughs> all of it. I also, most people don't don't know this movie, but if you don't watch it, it's so incredible. UHF. It's um, Weird Al's movie of 1985. Oh, my god. Also, gosh. as the guy who played Kramer before he got racist. In, Did uh, he get racist he got, or he what? Got, he, he, got got always. He, he got all racist. Okay. Uh, but, but UHF is just absolutely incredible. Basically... I, Okay, so I realized, and this is what made my these certain movies super extreme for me, was um, my mom was the reason these ridiculous parody movies came into our lives. And I, I didn't know this until much later on, and it just made me love it even more. All the parody movies, all the Leslie Nielsen Naked Guns, all the airplanes, all the, like, all of it. The, the loaded weapon, everything. Everything is just... So ridiculous, so incredible, and I didn't realize my mom had that kind of humor. And so when I figured that out, that it was her this whole time, it just it made me love them even more. <laughs> and so I, I super love all those movies. I love the airplanes. I love the the naked guns. I love the UHFs. All of those are just really important to me because she was the one who introduced them, and I didn't realize it until later on. But she was the one with this ridiculous humor. So hmm. that's why. I that's like really that. sweet. She's I also like just that. really good with the movies she she and i have a very close connection with movies to this day she'll tell me to watch something i'll watch it and i'll have to talk to her about it later a lot of movies i never understood and i'd have to call her about it later like uh, american graffiti i watched and i was like i don't understand what's happening and she's like okay imagine that the next step after american graffiti is that they are now going to the vietnam war hmm. and i was like oh fuck and all of a sudden <laughs> everything makes complete sense and so hmm. she's so so good so so sharp yeah. about movies that I, I will watch anything and then later completely recap everything. She doesn't watch horror movies, but when I watch them, I will then literally go play by play of every horror movie that I've seen and she'll talk to me about it. It's really, it's really wonderful. And so like movies in and of itself is one of the biggest things in my life because it's something that's such a close connection with her. Mm -hmm. But then when there are certain movies that are just like a little bit more ridiculous, I knew that she was the reason that it came into my life. Mm, that it just cool. makes me love it so, that's so cool. much. So 
the number one answer is to graduate, which also was introduced by my mother, Vivian K. Mm. Um, but then beyond that, all the funny movies still introduced by my mother, Vivian K. Anything Leslie Nielsen would be the, would be the second coming mm. of my favorite things. Because she's, oh, she's so fucking sharp. Literally any one of you could watch the most crazy movie and talk to her about it. And she'll just have the most sharp, wittiest response to why that movie mattered. Mm. And Is Leslie Nielsen still so around? Cool. Oh, when did he pass on? Oh, a couple of years ago, and it was really hard for my entire family. Oh, it was so so hard. Oh, he's he's just so wonderful. I know. I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna teary eyed over anything because <laughs> I don't cry. I'm I lack that emotion. But <laughs> but yeah, no. When when he passed, it was really really rough. But yeah, she was the reason why Leslie Nielsen was such a big name in my household. Fair. And then UHF with Weird Al was a big name in my household. That was my mm. mother. That's cute. Through and through. And that's why, like, movies in and of itself is such a big part of my house. Mm-hmm. Or my own personal life is because I can watch anything and talk to her about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's very important to me. Mm-hmm. So the religion I was a uh, part of as a child, we were... Take a shot. <laughs> we we weren't allowed to go to movie theaters. Scientology. Yay. So they changed that, like, when I was a little wait, bit older wait, child. Wait, you weren't allowed to go to movie theaters? No. So eventually they changed that and we were allowed to go. Realize that. Yeah. Whoa. So eventually I went to the movie theaters. Oh my um, god. But I still it was still kind of like a if you go to movie theaters, can I keep it on the down low kind of thing? Wow. Which really? I think is another reason why I don't have a large movie history. Oh, um, I didn't know that that was part of the religion. Yeah. So by the a, way, at any point, if you want to watch something and put my mom on speakerphone, she'd be happy to talk <laughs> to you about it. I'm good, but I, to this day, I don't have a huge love for movies because it's always been feel. You know, like there's certain things in my life still like I feel guilty for doing. One dancing, two drinking, three dancing. Movies. You're an amazing Fucking dancer. dancer. You're like, dance is against the law. Not, the water that's... just poured over, and she's like about to. <laughs> <laughs> but like that's that's where I come from though and that's why I have like a lot of guilt behind all these kind of things wow. still so like there's it was built in like I was oh. trademarked as a young or marked as a young child like don't do these things so it's always movies to this day still have a little bit of like a careful what you're doing kind of thing which is whatever it's super but my favorite movie that I've ever watched um, is probably uh, Karen Knightley's Pride and Prejudice Oh, I've never watched that. I've watched that 20 times in a row because I watched it right after I watched The de- the Descent with the human bat people horror movie. And they needed <laughs> something to, to cheer me up. It, I've never watched it. Is it really good? It's good. It changed, it's yeah, it's, like, it's, it's slightly different from the book. So the ending's really good. But the reason I like it Don't is because the music. Don't watch The Descent, though. The music, Unless you're, you're okay with scary movies. <laughs> The music in that movie is wonderful, and I like oh. when a I like when a movie engages music as part of the movie and not just like as the background. Mm. W- was the score written for the movie? It, the score is by Dar- Dario Marinelli, I think is his name, and it's written for the movie. It's oh. beautiful. I use it to sleep. Oh, um, it's a great mm. score. I have the piano book for it, so I'm, like if I could learn how to play any music from any movie perfectly, it'd be from that movie. I love it. It's beautiful. The story is good because it's always like a tie between like, is she going to get with a guy? Is she not going to get with a guy? Mr. Darcy. It's, yeah. And it's and it's resolved <laughs> in this movie um, as opposed to most Pride and Prejudice movies. This is actually has a resolution. And I like it. Mm. It's been really good in watching that movie. Um, I love it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Right. I, I really didn't know that there were there was a religion saying not going to movie theaters. I didn't, yeah. I didn't know that. So I grew up in the Nazarene Church, Church of the Nazarene, which is like a it's kind of like a branch off of Methodist. Oh, okay. So not that different from Methodist at all, but they're one of the rules. They have a lot of rules <laughs> you have to follow. And hey. one of them was like, don't go to movie theaters. And I think they changed it when I was a young child, but still, wow. you know, like when they just change a rule, there's still like a lot of Associated apprehension guilt. and association of guilt with it. Yeah. So I have a lot of like, not Jewish guilt. <laughs> I have a lot of, <laughs> of Nazarene. Christian, Christian guilt, I guess, uh, for a lot of things I do in my life still, even like drinking a lot, I still feel guilty about it. Dang, yeah. that's there's some a lot to unpack there, Stephanie. Uh, therapist, some, <laughs> I know. I I didn't. I've never had a, a drinking. I nope. mean, issue. I think or like if confusion. you did, you got over it real fast. Well, I mean, the man of Shevitz, <laughs> the man of Shevitz when we were young, but no, drinking was never a thing. That was like be ashamed. I mean, culturally, a lot of things being Chinese are like be ashamed. How many be ashamed. shots did we have to take in that moment? 
I mean, a lot. Christianity, Jew, Chinese. Come I on. mean, that's a that's a good racial joke about the, about some guild up in there. Like I I, I think I had a good childhood. Down whatever I think I was, you have in front of you. I think I was raised well. I had a lot of love in my life, but then there's still a lot of guilt associated with things that I was like forced to believe as a kid. But that's one of them is movies. And so I feel like there are a lot of movies that I just missed out on or I never got to see or my parents would never even allow us to watch in our house. So like mm. my dad was like, if you're not watching the news or C-SPAN or the Weather Channel, then you shouldn't be watching TV. All right. <laughs> we're going to have to do a movie night. We're going to have to do the full Naked Gun series. Oh if you haven't seen it, we're going to watch I have not it. Seen it. I it's think... very important to my upbringing. That you see okay. <laughs> all of Naked Gun. I feel like there are going to be parts where you're going to get real uncomfortable. Mostly because OJ was in the first movie. <laughs> <laughs> he went to high school right next to my apartment building. He was the main star of SF State, which is why we don't have a program anymore. Oh my and he God, also, OJ. Yeah, he went to high school like, a, like right, where, I, where I live. <laughs> oh my Didn't they used to have the field Let's just like remove OJ, OJ from the yeah. situation. And then it's just a really, really funny, hilarious movie. Okay. You know what movie? We should, we should really compile a list of movies and then share it with our listeners. Yes. I think that'd be really fun. I also think we should compile a list if you want to watch these movies. There's one around the same time frame Robin Hood Men in Tights. Robin Hood Men in Tights yeah. is one of the best movies ever made of all time. Mel ever. Brooks. Ooh, Mel Brooks. My I, I God. Like the, I like the soundtrack from it. Oh, oh you've heard oh the soundtrack? Oh, yeah. my God. Robin Hood Men in Tights is like such a. Mel Brooks is literally our Jewish God. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's grabbing your face. Chappelle's so in it. His name's Achu. I know. Bless you. Bless you. Yes, we all love Mel Brooks. Nobody does not love Mel Brooks. It's, it's a good, it's a real, it's, you don't realize how many actual mean, celebrities the, are in that. Frisco kid, I will, was that, yeah, that was Mel Brooks, right? Even yep. Gene Wilder. Yeah, I all, all the bit. Yes, yes. Put it on the list. Hey, I bet. I hate that. I hate that guy. guy. But yes. I do, I could list for you, like, all the movies. Like, my second favorite movie is uh, Notting Hill. Oh, I love. I, love I don't yeah. love a I, lot of romantic comedies. Notting Hill is one. Of I, them. Love I love that movie. Yeah. I also love as go- or not as good. Shit, that was the wrong one. Um, because I said so. What's that one what's about? That? Oh, it's terrible. It sounds familiar. It's terrible. It's Mandy Moore. It's uh, Di- Diane Lane. Diane Lane and Mandy Moore. Yeah, Interesting. and Gabriel Mott. And the one guy from oh from from I'm sorry he's in that too. Um, the main guy, the yeah, husband, the husband. Mm. He is so cute, by the I'm way. So have we actually nice. talked about I'm sorry on the show? See, I'm sorry. Watch it. Make a third season happen, or we'll cut you. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, they're all in that. And it's, it's Tom Everett Scott. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Good yeah, memory. No, no, it's, also, it's he's really he's in my third favorite movie. That, I love that thing you do. Oh, that's a good one. That's Mainly because, again, the soundtrack was built for that, or written for that show. Yeah. And I can still sing to you word for word every song from that yeah, movie. It's, it's I love it. Can you I love please it. watch, because you like shows that also integrate music, can you watch Rhythm and Flow on Netflix? <laughs> I'm going to do that over, uh, over things. I, oh, we're I'm, past that. I, I'm gonna watch that before our next recording. I am disappointed that you haven't, so I'm not gonna call you out too hard about that. You but didn't call me out. I'm mad at Ti, Ti, Cardi B, and Chance the Rapper. I love Cardi B. I love Chance, but Ti pisses me off sometimes. Why? Because of the gold thing, the whole Oh, comments. the daughter. I didn't hear about that until recently. Yeah, I'm not okay with it. But so like I grew up in my era. <laughs> well, you know what? I would say though he has the best one-liners I've ever heard in my life. I mean, life. sure. I no also heard in the... Oh, I can't get political, can I? Shit. No. 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 But Some anyways... Some other person talked about the word expeditiously. He's like, expeditiously. Expeditiously. <laughs> he, he and I've heard that a couple of times, and now I can think of the T.I. Oh, yeah. Well, he also said to one of the contestants who almost won, uh, but didn't, he's like, I'll keep the champagne cold for you. And I was like... <laughs> I like that. Why do you always talk like this? Like, what? I keep the champagne cold for you. <laughs> Anyways, we should probably move on to our, our third so question. question. Jesus Christ. Yeah, so it's my question. This is kind of a, it's, it's a fast this. moving one. This is a spitfire. Would you rather? I have three questions for us. Spend more, no more than a couple of minutes in each one. Yes. Okay. So quick All section. Right. But I want to hear each of your thoughts on it. So don't go deep, but go answer and why. I'm already mm-hmm. ready. Yeah, I know you. I can see it. You're shaking this. it. Uh, first question. It. Would you rather only brush your hair once a month or brush your teeth once a month? Hair. Hair, because I never brush my hair. I brush my teeth all the time. I'm obsessed with it. But hair, you can deal with it. 
I literally it's not going to actually affect your internal immune system and shit when I pull that. <laughs> I literally don't comb my hair. <sighs> what I would give. You're so lucky. Ashley's so. hair always looks great, and she never comes in. And she's lucky. I what use I my fingers. Give. You can use your fingers because you said comb. I can use my fingers. Loophole. Go what, on. What did Ariel <laughs> call the the fork? The 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 hair thing. The, the she, her her fork. I don't not remember. Not doppelganger. What? But it's like something like that. Right? I know what you're saying. Yeah. I don't remember though. Ariel from Little Mermaid. She yeah. called the fork her uh, her hair thing. Oh yes. Oh, we're gonna get so many people telling this. I will brush my teeth twice a day, minimum every day of my life. I yeah. can comb my hair yeah. whenever it needs to be combed. I don't care. Yeah. I would just like get dreads, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, for me though, I'd, I'd also brush my teeth more frequently and my hair less frequently. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. So I know one of you from this next question already does one of these. I feel like. <laughs> what would, is it? What would is you it? rather sleep wearing handcuffs or a bike helmet? I know handcuffs, a hundred percent, because you're assuming I don't already. <laughs> yes. Or a bike helmet? Yeah, you sleep wearing either handcuffs or a bike. Helmet. Are they front handcuffs or back handcuffs? I don't know. However, you wear your handcuffs. Handcuffs to the bed. <laughs> See, Stephanie, I already said that you wore handcuffs to bed too. Well, if they're I'm if they are attached to the bed, I disagree <laughs> because I pee a lot and I have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. If they are attached to my bed, I can't do that. Who, I'm they, not saying that you don't have a key. <laughs> so I have to deal with the key situation? You just like wearing handcuffs to bed. Is my, I mean, my I, if it's handcuffs in the front, I go handcuffs to the front. Handcuffs to the back, I go handcuffs to the back. If it's handcuffs to the bed, I'm going bike helmet. <laughs> okay. I pee a lot. The only one thing I'd say against the bike, hel- bike helmet yeah. is that it breaks up the where your spine relaxes. So that means that your like neck situation is going to be very uncomfortable. There's going to be a lot of pressure on your neck I and your know. spine. I don't know. I might choose a bike helmet because I think there's things you can add to the bike helmet to make it better. Like you could add earplugs that naturally stay in there, a face mask that stays in there. So you could have like extra pillows inside of your head, you your bike helmet. Basically creating a head cocoon. Yes. <laughs> That's horrifying. You're in the next evolution cycle of humans. Do I ever tell you sometimes when I sleep, I will take like a blanket and put my head, put it over my face, put it over my whole head and like my rest of my body will be like exposed to the nature of my apartment what no i i mean i think most people have like the one leg or the one foot outside of the the blanket i have a mouth hole (laughs) just a mouth hole i literally cover i could i i womb myself (laughs) and then i have a mouth hole so i I can get my head like if i if i know i'm gonna sleep in that day like on a saturday and i know i need to sleep in past like sunrise i will take a blanket and put it over my head completely so i don't hear i don't i don't see but your body's exposed yeah My i like the hand. weighted blanket feel i'm an exhibitionist mm. oh, I okay but if you feel. if you got oh. the, the handcuffs and it's to the bed things fall asleep you know what i mean when, so why when, does it matter you won't feel it i would i because i'd have to figure out to get to get out of it so i can pee oh <laughs> break your I thumbs just, I just think I'd, I'd rather be in, the, be in the front if it's in the back and deal with that i can also it there out. are a lot of helmets that are a lot thinner nowadays too I mean, just I'm just envisioning a thick ass helmet that you use while like biking. Obviously, well, you saw that I have a bike helmet hanging from my stationary bike in my apartment, right? Oh my goodness, my <laughs> Anyways, goodness. on. Last question. Let's do this. Okay. Would you, it's, this one I stole from online? So I think it's funny. Would you rather that humans greeted each other by sniffing each other's butts or their armpits? Mm, I'm armpits. Ar- armpits. Wait, wait. One at a time. Put, Mm, Ashley. Okay. I say armpits because the closer that I am to fecal matter, the worse things could happen to me. Also, not everyone has BO. So it's a draw of probability versus everyone's ass smells. So mm-hmm. have you smelled my ass? <laughs> smells really good, girl. Yeah. <laughs> I will also agree with armpits because that also indicates whether or not you are nervous, whether or not you've worked out and have not showered or whatever the case may be. But if you just take it a shit and you haven't wiped well, I don't want to do that. I don't want to deal with that. Why do you want to like, know someone's nervous? <laughs> I mean, I'm always nervous, so I'm just curious. But with the armpits, you can at least tell if it's like a nervous sweat versus an actual sweat versus like I've commuted, I've, I've worked out and showered recently. I think there's a lot more you can get from armpits than you can from butts. Mm. But also, I would like to grab it. Do your pheromones <laughs> come out of your armpits? I think they do. Do they? they? 
I don't know. I we have we a should lot of questions up. about armpits, and we no should. one has answered any somebody, of them. Okay, if somebody can come back to us and tell us where the pheromones come from, so I know what to... Expose yourself, how to expose exactly. yourself. Exactly. I, I, I date a lot, so if you could tell me what to be better at, that would be Rubbing great. your armpits on their face. Actually, there was a follower of ours on Instagram who said that he believed that armpit hair helps the pheromones come out, but I actually don't... When I looked it up, there's a lot of unknown science about the armpits. But we think we know, so we talked, we talked about this at work the other day, and I came to the conclusion, I think someone else likes this idea too, that I feel like armpit hair and um, pubic hair are kind of like uh, helping you resist like skin to skin so you can like move your legs back and forth without like rashing up. Yeah, but protect wait, from what shaking. What does armpit mean? Similar, but like I think you don't move your arms as much as you do your legs. Oh, you don't arms, as much. What? I mean, you're not chafing up in there. Oh, but I am. <laughs> but I, I move. I got a huge blister in my pit. <laughs> I move my armpits quite a bit. I don't know. Well, if that was true, then I'd be like, why isn't there hair between your thighs? But there was, but you, Back you in the friction day? it away. I don't have hair basically that grows above my knees. You're lucky. However, I think <laughs> <laughs> I think if my you look Eastern closely, European ways, if you look just closely nothing up at your inner thighs, I feel like that if there's any rubbage there, which most people there is rubbage between your thighs. Yes, yes, yes. That's you're not talking about hair. Square crotch. Rubbing is different. But hair that, is different. But that hair goes away because of the friction between your thighs. Anyway, anyway, thank you guys for answering my quick questions. Mm-hmm. Would you rather? I like the quick fires. Let's do more yeah. quick fires. So People send us more quick this. fires. If you guys, so we're considering doing like a Patreon. If you guys would like to contribute, us, we're we're putting together one of our episodes. I think we could do for Patreon subscribers or um, patrons would be to do quick fire. Would you rather episodes? It yes, would be super fun. So send them our uh, way. If you guys, if you guys like that idea, let us know. If not, we can think of other ideas to do for our. If patrons. they're too dirty, they're not. <laughs> so yeah something we've been oh, thinking shit. about um but that wraps Let's up my wraps up my Sorry, quick okay. this is my my test would you rather section for us i liked it yeah i liked it i like too um so we could also take like patrons could submit all their would you rather's we could go through all those uh but i have like books full of them too oh, Ooh, shit. Yeah. yeah yes okay. i don't have to think of a question ever again uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. so anyway um, i do the least amount on this podcast <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, let's let's wrap this up. Uh, this is episode twenty-two. We appreciate you guys being here for us. Uh, tell your friends about the podcast. Listen to it with your friends if you need to convince them it's good. Um, even like hold them hostage in your car. You know, take them to McDonald's. Whatever. Offer like, them half of your subway sandwich. Yeah, do what you got to do uh, <laughs> to force the pot on to them. To force the pot. On them. Force it. And show us your examples of what you did to force the pot on people. No, don't don't provide. Let the us pod evidence. be do with not you. Provide us evidence. <laughs> I will subpoena for what's right. So don't, send it to Ashley and me. Don't provide a shit. I did not decline that. <laughs> don't do it. So we will see you guys back here next week with episode 23. And uh, we do want to hear about your, your New Year's resolutions and things you've been doing and what you think of 2020 so far. Ugh. And we will see you guys <laughs> next week for episode 23. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.